In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Describe how to calculate bond price. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. If we see a question like this, an essay question or discussion question, if we don't know where to start, we might be asking, what, is, what are they talking about bond price? I don't have no idea how to calculate the bond price. We may start out with just what is a bond. We could start out with what is a bond. We might be able to pick up some points there as we think through that. Uh, then we could jog our memory in terms of how do we figure out what a bond price will be. Or possibly even if we don't know exactly uh, what they're asking, we may stumble upon it even though uh, we don't know what they mean by bond price possibly. So if we think about what is a bond, we can think, well, a bond is going to be something that a company is going to issue in order to help generate cash. So we're trying to get financing to the company. So if we're trying to get financing to the company, we're going to issue kind of like a note. It's going to be similar to a loan. We are going to issue a promise uh, to repay, to pay something in the future uh, in order to get money now. So the journal entry would then be that uh, we're going to debit cash and we're going to credit the, the bond payable. And the bond payable is going to be a promise to pay. They're typically in terms of like a thousand dollar bonds. We can have multiple bonds, thousand dollar, multiple bonds of a thousand dollar typically. And then we're going to, that we would issue. And then we'll have some kind of stated rate on the bond. And usually there's two flows assumptions that will happen here with the bond. One is that uh, we're going to, we're going to say that sometime in the future at the maturity date, we're going to pay back a thousand dollars because that's that's what it says on the bond that's the promise of the bond and then periodically we're going to ha have the interest payments that are going to happen let's say there's there's semi-annual interest payments so we're going to say semi-annual interest payments every six months we're going to pay interest so now we have two kind of cash flow type methods that that are going to happen here we're going to pay back uh the one the one thousand and then we're going to have this this uh, number of payments that are going to happen throughout the time period. So what we're talking about now is that what's the bond price? Well, what does that mean then? We're, we're talking about what, what we would issue the bond for, basically. What would be, what's the bond worth? And note that it's not necessarily going to be a thousand because the reason it might not be a thousand is if the market rate is different than the rate stated on the bond. So if the market rate were, say, 12%, then, then uh, the, it, the, the, the price of the bond would differ because we're only paying 10%. So if someone can go somewhere else, in other words, and get 12% uh, for their $1,000, they're not gonna give us $1,000. And we gotta decide, well, how much should the price of our bond be if uh, we're gonna try to sell this $1,000 bond and we only pay 10% where the market is 12%. How can we fix this? Well, we could change the price of the bond. We can sell it for less than a thousand dollars, and so and that and that's all we need to know for a lot of types of tests, a lot of questions. But then the question is, well, how, you know, how are we going to figure out exactly what the price could be? I could see, well, they're going to get, you know, if this if this person goes somewhere else, they're not going to go here because they know they're going to get a higher rate. But what's the price that we can sell this thing for in order to, uh, in order to equalize this difference in interest rates? Well, we're going to present value that to do it, to do that. And what we do is we're just going to take the, the cash flows. One cash flow is $1,000. It's going to happen in the future. The other cash flow is a series of like an annuity. And we're going to take this $1,000 and bring it back to present value for that cash flow. And we're going to take this annuity and bring it back to present value for those cash flows. And then if we add up these two present values, whatever that adds up to is going to be the amount and this isn't right of course but this is going to be the amount that we're going to to use to to calculate the the bond price now you could get into different ways that you would do that when you say a present value that's probably enough that we're going to use a present value calculation
But notice the present value calculation could be mathematical. Uh, some, some classes might want the equation, want you to say the equation. There's going to be two different equations here. One for the present value of one payment, and then the other the present value of an annuity. So you, you might, it, it, depending on how, what kind of, what kind of question you're being asked, you might want to go into those two different formulas. Or you can say, well, you're going to present value it using tables, oftentimes used for accounting classes that want to uh, limit the, the kind of calculator you're using, but also not force you to go through the, the math of it. Or you can present value it using uh, Excel or something like that. So whatever the, whatever the ways you present value it, the theory is probably all you need for a discussion question like this, and that would be that you're going to take the cash flows, you're going to present value them, and whatever that present value is on, on the market rate, so you're going to present value it on the market rate. Note if you present valued it on the, uh, uh, well, you want to present value it on the market rate, right? And that'll bring you to the, to the present value amount, which will differ from, from the face amount. And that's how you get the, the price.